The next Vice President of the United States, J.D. Vance, Senator from Ohio, joins us now. J.D., great to have you on the program again. Good to be with you guys. How are you? Oh, we're good, man. You know, some of us knew you were going to be the VP like six months ago. I'm just saying, some of us. There's <laughs> there's a record of this stuff uh, out there. So I had to you know. buy a steak yeah, for Buck. He said that you were going to be the VP pick months and months ago. It's his greatest <laughs> prediction on the show. So I'm not surprised that he would decide to gloat as we began the interview. Just throwing it well, out there. Uh, just that, makes, to... that makes one of us, guys, because you, you knew something Buck I didn't know, but good on you. Ah, there you go. You know, sometimes the best thing is to throw it into the end zone with your eyes closed. So anyway, my friend, <laughs> uh, I got lucky on that one. Tell me this, though. Last night, the Kamala speech, we both watched, meaning Clay and I, I'm sure you watched it too. I, 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 it feels like a camp. You know how Seinfeld was a show about nothing? I mean, it wasn't obviously totally about nothing, but it was just like them living their lives, and that's how he pitched it to NBC. It's a show about nothing. The Kamala campaign seems to just be a show about feelings. Uh, what, what, what is she really trying to accomplish? Like, what is, the, what is the policy thrust? Yeah, so I didn't watch the whole speech just because I, you know, didn't want to lose 20 IQ points, um, you know, when I'm underslept thanks to the campaign. But, look, I, I, I think that what she's trying to do here is make herself the change agent, right? She's trying to make people forget that she bears responsibility for the open border, for the inflation, for the, you know, the Inflation Explosion Act, which she cast a deciding vote on. And she's, I think, persuading her party that if they just lie to the American people and try to induce this collective amnesia, everybody's going to forget that she's been the vice president for the past three and a half years. And I just don't think it works, right? It maybe works for one night at a DNC convention when there's no countervailing narrative, but I don't think that she can run that message for 75 days. Eventually people are going to say, like, why did you do all these things that made my life worse? And I don't think Kamala has a good answer. Tim Walls is, I think, also a disaster. Um, but one of the attack lines that they've come after you on, I just think is, regardless of your politics, absolutely ridiculous. And, and I'm curious for you, uh, you graduated from a family that was not very doing very well financially, went into the Marines, went to Ohio State. I'll ask you about the Buckeyes forecast this year here in a little bit. And then you go to Yale Law School. That's an incredible accomplishment. Uh, I know your grandmother and your mother were ecstatic about you being able to accomplish that. When Tim Walls and Kamala Harris attack you for going to Yale Law School, I think it lands really flat, not even with just Democrat voters or Republican voters, but just moms and dads and grandpas and grandmas out there that want their kids to achieve as much as possible. Are you kind of surprised that this has become one of the lines of attack against you? Yeah, I am surprised because I know these people are cynical about politics, but I just don't think that it actually works, right? I mean, a lot of Americans, especially those who grew up in less fortunate circumstances, they want their kids to be able to achieve the American dream. And I've never felt this sense of resentment directed towards me. I've always felt when people hear my story, they kind of see you know, themselves in me, and they're, they're rooting for me because I came from a similar background to the one that they came from. And I think any kid who grows up in the kind of circumstances that I grew up in, a poor family, you know, not, not the nicest uh, things, not easy, not an easy life. You know, we always feel this sense of, of great gratitude to the people who made us who we are. And for me, in particular, that's my mom and my grandmother. And I just feel like this overwhelming sense of thanks that they worked and sacrificed and made it possible for me to live the life that I've been able to live. And I think most Americans feel that sense of gratitude to somebody in their life. And I think when Tim Waltz tries to insult what I've accomplished, he's fundamentally insulting you know, these women who made me who I am, I just don't think that it works. I think most people want their kids to have a better life, and uh, they're kind of proud when that happens. They're not resentful. You know, there was a lot of uh, attention on the comments that Andy Bashir made uh, after, I think it was night two of the DNC, and he brought you up, and he said something that uh, that people truly thought was was over the line and tried to give him an opportunity to walk it back or clarify, and the governor of Kentucky did not do so. W what do you think about that? Where do you stand on, on what Bashir said when he said that he hoped that something terrible would befall your family? Yeah, I think it was really gross, right? I mean, I, I sort of expect that people are going to come after me. That's the price of participating in national politics. But to have a guy stand there and say, well, 
I hope that JD experiences a female in his family who's impregnated through rape. It's like, well, are you talking about my daughter? Are you talking about my wife? It's just gross. Just leave these guys out of it and don't engage in these bizarre fantasies because you have these ridiculous, regressive social views. So, look, man, it's, it's, you kind of get used to it. My wife is very tough, and I think that uh, you know, she sort of accepts that this is just the price of participation here, not just for me but for herself and for the whole family. Uh, it's not a good thing that that's how it is, and uh, you know, I think the best revenge here is, is victory, right? We want to beat these guys, take back the country, and make them realize that that kind of politics just doesn't work for most Americans. But um, if we don't beat them, then it's going to be rewarded. I think it's one of the, the reasons it's so important to actually win is it's not just we want to govern the country more effectively, and that's obviously the most important thing. I think we also want to make sure that the Democrats don't feel emboldened by the kind of race that they've been running, which is completely divorced from details or policy. It's all about vibes, and it's all about gaslighting. Like, I don't want anybody to be elected president running a campaign like that. RFK Jr. is going to have a rally in about an hour. Uh, President Trump is out in Phoenix area as well. Do you expect RFK Jr. to drop out of the race? And if he does, do you think he's going to endorse you guys? What do you know about what's coming in the next few hours? Yeah, so I really don't know a whole lot, right? I mean, I've been making my pitch to RFK personally and to his voters, but in public, right? I've never actually spoken um, to RFK about dropping out of the race or about getting behind the president. I certainly think that if you look at the issue set that RFK cares about, right, so take medical freedom. Um, this is a guy who's been, I think, a very important voice in America on why do we kick a bunch of veterans out of the military? Why do we fire a bunch of nurses for refusing to take the experimental COVID shot? Like, clearly, Trump is more the candidate of medical freedom. Uh, if you think about what RFK has said about the Ukraine conflict and not turning this thing into World War III, clearly Trump is the person who's trying to prevent this thing from escalating. So I think on the issue set, clearly Trump is the guy. And I also think, I mean, you guys know, I, I grew up in a family of blue dogs, socially conservative Democrats. They were Kennedy Democrats, right? And they feel like the party has left them behind, and that's why they've become Trump Republicans. So I think it would be a very powerful testament to have an actual Kennedy, the most famous Kennedy still living, get behind Donald Trump. I certainly hope that he will. I have no reason to mistrust the media reports about it. I think it is going to happen. I don't know exactly how it's going to happen, but there's just no room for Kennedy Democrats and Kamala Harris's party anymore. So I hope they come to our side. Do you think it could be significant given what the polls are telling everybody about these critical swing states? And and also, if I could add to that, J.D., uh, what are you seeing in terms of the ground game? I mean, you know, you're the number two on the Republican side here, so you must have good visibility into how the GOP is is operating in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan. You know, I, I think it's uh, it, it could be really important, right? I mean, we know the race is going to be tight. Uh, we we know the media is on the side of Kamala and the Democrats. And we just know we live in a divided country. So a couple points here or there could mean the difference between Donald Trump or Kamala Harris getting elected president. So, yeah, it's really, really important. On the ground game side, I mean, what, what we're seeing is uh, two things, right? So first of all, our grassroots are super engaged. People are very excited. And I think the energy here is just, you know, off the charts. But we're also doing a lot of things that people don't realize to try to ensure election integrity. The new RNC chair has filed close to 90 lawsuits to try to protect legally cast ballots, but ensure that illegally cast ballots aren't counted. So we've got a lot going on. Some of it doesn't always collect headlines. We actually had two really big victories, one in Arizona and one in Pennsylvania, on the ballot integrity front just in the last couple days. So, look, man, I think it's going well. We're going to have to run through the finish line. We're going to have to do what we can. But if you just look at the numbers, both what we're seeing from the Democrats, the public numbers, And our own private numbers, what we're seeing is that Kamala Harris got a bit of a sugar high towards the end of July. It started to wear off a little bit. I don't think their convention is going to stem that at all. In fact, it might accelerate it. And so we're in a good spot. We just have to do what we need to do. Talking to J.D. Vance. Okay, you're an Ohio State Buckeye fan. College football starts this weekend. You just mentioned the Midwest. Honestly, Big Ten fans in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, many of them listening to us right now, probably are going to decide this election. How do you think Ohio State's going to do? And how do you balance that out going on the road and making your pitch to Wolverine, Spartans, Penn State Nittany Lion fans, and Wisconsin Badger fans all over Big Ten Nation? Because I think that's pretty much where you're going to be campaigning all fall. 
Yeah, I mean, I've already spent a ton of time in Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. I pretty much go there once a week and will through, I mean, each state I go once a week and will through the end of the election. Yeah, I joked with the president when he first asked me to be his VP. I was like, well, you know, hopefully we don't lose Michigan by like 900 votes because you're going to regret it because it's probably just a thousand pissed off Wolverine fans who wouldn't <laughs> vote for a Buckeye. But I, I, I think that most Michiganders are going to be able to put sports rivalries aside and put the country first, which is what, of course, all of us believe is the most important thing. I mean, look, I'm a lifelong Buckeyes fan. I think we have, just in terms of sheer raw talent, maybe the best Ohio State team I've seen uh, since, you know, the, the great 2003 team that upset the um, upset Miami in the national championship game. Like, we have, we are stacked this year. And I think that if we if we take care of things, I mean, we should be in the title game. We should win it, but we'll see, man. By the way, that was passing. That was not pass interference in the uh, in the championship game against Miami. <laughs> uh, I strongly you guys disagree. Can never also complain like about two, officiating were, for the rest of your they, life as for, a fan after getting that call. There were there were two other calls that went against us earlier <laughs> in the game where we would have won either one of them. So on balance, we won that game. I'll I'll go to my grave believing that. If if I may, if I may weigh in here as the Nostradamus of all things JD world. I think my beloved Buckeyes will have the best year they have had in many years, Clay and J.D. Buck, Buck, by the way, you should know this, J.D. Buck had never been to a college football game. I took him to Alabama, Ole Miss. He had an amazing time. He couldn't believe that this was a world that he had never experienced before. But now he tries to claim that he's a fan of every team. And so he's like, he's always saying, like, <laughs> Clay, roll tide. don't and tell everybody. Eagle. He's going to be saying, you know, I've always been held to the victors. And also, you know, I've always been a big Ohio State guy. I mean, really... The pandering is is absurd on this show. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's go to the Ohio State Michigan game, assuming we win, because I bet I can get some pretty sweet tickets as the VP elect, and we'll be in a celebratory mood. And uh, look, it's it's going to be a big game this year. I think it's going to determine uh, ultimate seeding in the college football playoff. I mean, hell, both teams might actually make the playoff. I know Michigan's, you know, sort of people aren't 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 putting them as high this year, but you never know because it's always a good program. So. We'll see, guys. I'm feeling very good about the Buckeyes. I'm feeling very good about the Bengals. And I'm feeling very good about this presidential race. So maybe we can hit the trifecta here and have the Buckeyes win the, the, the CFP playoff, the Bengals win the Super Bowl, and Donald Trump get elected president. That'd be a good year. I have total faith you and Trump are going to win. You know, we were talking about this before. Neither Clay nor I have ever been to the uh, Naval Observatory, so you may have to get some well, someone on your staff to give us a tour, okay? <laughs> that's, that's in your future, uh, you guys too. You are welcome. Thank you. Right, J.D. Vance, good. everybody. Make sure, uh, J.D., where, uh, cite anything you want to tell people to go to. They can get involved, help out. Most important thing, DonaldJTrump.com. Volunteer, donate if you're able, because we've got to correct the record on Kamala Harris, and donations help us do that. Uh, volunteer, knock on doors, or, or do phone banking. We just have to do everything we can to win this race. It's going to be tight, but we're going to win. Absolutely. J.D. Vance, everybody. Right. Check them out. Uh, new credit card company out there that made their first visa back credit card available to this audience. They think you'll want to carry it because it's set up to support conservative causes with every purchase made. It's called COIN. Spelled with a G in this case, C-O-I-G-N. Every purchase made using your COIN credit card, they donate a portion of every transaction to conservative-minded charities and causes. And you can also get 1% cash back on every dollar you spend. Most credit card companies don't consider donating even a dollar to a conservative entity, but COIN does. And one of the nonprofit organizations they're helping right now, Dog Rescue and Training Organization Helping Disabled Veterans Rescue 22. They rescue dogs and train them to become service dogs for service-connected disabled veterans. Sign up now for America's conservative credit card at COIN.com. We both got ours, got the Constitution on it. A uh, red credit card with the Constitution in the background. Very cool. Easy to sign up for. Easy to pay. Uh, paid my first bill with Coin Credit Card yesterday. Super easy to connect to the bank account and everything else. Coin.com. C-O-I-G-N.com. Be sure to say Clay and Buck sent you there. That's Coin.com. Terms apply. C-O-I-G-N.com. Slash disclosure for full details.